Hi, I'm Jeff Kornberg, and on this episode of The Dragon's Tomb, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Mage Knight. As everyone knows, MAGE stands for the Michigan Association of Governmental Employees, and in Mage Knight, players will take on the role of corrupt civil service workers traversing through the terrible city of Detroit. To set up, have each player take a stack of action tiles and a governmental employee. The employees are all wearing armor to protect themselves from the abominable dangers of Detroit. Begin to lay out the city by placing a tile with this town hall symbol in the center of your table. Then, surround it with six other city tiles and one face-down tile to act as your underfunded government headquarters. Next, locate all of the dilapidated buildings, which are represented by these symbols. Give each of them a number of violation tokens based on the type of land that they occupy, as depicted on this reference board. For example, dilapidated buildings on grassy land get two violations, while ones on garbage-filled land get four. After this, Take a town hall and, as a group, decide how corrupt you want it to be. For an easy game, set its dial to 3. For medium, set it to 6, 9 for hard, and 11 for Detroit hard. Then, place it onto the town hall space. Now you're ready to start playing. The object of the game is to collect enough evidence to blackmail the mayor into resigning, freeing Detroit from its harrowing curse. The tallest player goes first. On your turn, flip over your top action tile. Movement will be shown on the left, and you must move your employee that number of spaces. If you land on a dilapidated building with at least one violation token, you may try to investigate and gain evidence against the mayor. Flip over a violation card, revealing an infraction the mayor has allowed to occur. To collect this as evidence, take a number of these government-issued dice equal to the amount shown on the right side of your action tile. Roll them, and if the color shown on the violation card matches the color rolled on at least one die, you successfully collect this evidence, gaining one of the violation tokens. However, if you don't roll a matching color, you fail to collect the evidence, causing you to accidentally prick yourself on an illegal drug needle, and you must take a blood drop card. These cards signify that some of your DNA was left at the location, and on all future turns, you must roll one less die than shown on your action tile. If at any time you have four blood drop cards in your possession, you've botched the job and lose the game. To get rid of these cards, you can build up your street cred by visiting a local community gang. If you land on one of these spaces, you may challenge the corresponding gang to a brawl. Flip over one of that gang's tiles and roll two of your government-issued dice. Match the roll colors to the tile to get a number. For example, rolling a white and a red here creates the number 33. Then, flip over a brawl card and count up the total number of words that are written on it. If there are more words on the card than the number you rolled, congratulations, you've just won the brawl. As a reward, you may discard one blood drop card. Once you've collected some violations, you may move adjacent to the town hall to begin planting evidence to blackmail the mayor. For each violation you trade in, lower the town hall's corruption by one. Once the corruption level reaches zero, you've successfully blackmailed the mayor, and it's time for your final showdown. This miniature represents the physical manifestation of the real-life mayor of Detroit, Mike Duggan. Place him at your underfunded government headquarters. He'll soon be going across the city trying to discredit your evidence, so it's your job to try and distract him. Each player should take five of these which are gig posters for Detroit's most distinguished musical group, the Insane Clown Posse. Place the posters throughout the city on any hexes you'd like. Once you finish, it's time for the mayor to begin. Flip over a lobbyist card. Each card features a different organization that will dictate how he travels across the city. Read the text on the card, and then move the mayor accordingly. If he lands on a dilapidated building, he may place one of your discarded violation tokens back onto the board. If he lands on a space with an Insane Clown Posse gig poster, he takes it into his possession. After each move, flip over a new lobbyist card and move the mayor again. If at any point Mike puts all of the violation tokens back onto the board, he's buried your blackmail and you unfortunately lose the game. 
However, if at any point he collects all of the Insane Clown Posse gig posters, he gets convinced to resign and become a juggalo. If this happens, congratulations, you've just won the game. After you're done playing, if you want to rate the game on BoardGameGeek, the publisher has also included this handy rating board. Simply point to the rating you'd like to give, take a photo, and send it in an email to wericmartin at gmail.com. He'll take it from there and input your score into the Mage Knight BGG page. All in all, this game is a blast to play. However, I do have to say I'm disappointed the publisher has relied so heavily on lowbrow Detroit stereotypes. Detroit is a city that has gone through some rough times and is working hard to turn things around, so it's a shame a game would help propagate these harmful, exaggerated generalizations. On top of that, I resent that it downplays the historical significance of the insane clown posse. I'm actually good friends with Violent J and Shaggy 2 Dope and have even directed a few of their music videos, so it's sad to see them being depicted in such a disrespectful way. Whoop whoop.